Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we'll discuss how to use a very basic interrupt routine with embed for the Nucleo STM32 boards. So here's the circuit we'll be using today. As you can see, we've got an LED over here, just a basic yellow LED and a basic push button. So just two components connected on the breadboard, which is connected to the Nucleo. So you've got both components grounded, the LED via the orange wire, and then the push button via the red wire, both going to ground. And then you've got pin D5, which is the green wire going to the LED. And you've got pin D6, the white wire going to the push button. So you do need to focus and concentrate on polarity for the LED. So that's something to bear in mind. If your circuit doesn't work, you probably just need to switch around the polarity of your LED. So what we're going to do is we're going to flash the onboard LED, which is the small green LED on the nuclear board. We're going to flash that continuously on and off. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have our program set up such that when the button on the breadboard is pressed, so the actual push button on the breadboard, right? When that's pressed, we'll interrupt the program and turn on the LED on the breadboard. Okay. The way I kind of imagine it is imagine you've got the nuclear board, which is running as a factory and it's running operations as normal, which is our little green LED flicking on and off. And then the breadboard could be, you know, a control room where a control operator presses a button activates a separate system like an alarm and emergency system which is the led um, on our breadboard so it's a super simple program but you can envision scaling it up very easily and so i think this is a great program to just understand the basics of what an interrupt actually is so now if you don't already know what an interrupt is then you might think what i've just said could easily be done with an if statement so for example here's the code that we would use if we wanted to do exactly what I just mentioned, which is have the LED on the board flashing on and off. And then when the button is pressed, then turn on the LED on the breadboard. So you can see here we've got the if statement. And because we're activating the pull up resistor on our push button, then what that means is that our push button is actually always high. And so what we're going to use in our if statement is we're going to say if the button is zero, i.e., you know, not been pressed, so it goes to zero then call this function flip which would then flip the led on and off so this is how you do it using an if statement so hopefully you're all familiar with how an if statement works so what this is called is this is called polling what we're doing is we're asking the code or the program to poll the button meaning check its status for every single iteration of the program so as you're going through the program each time you go through the program the program is going to check the condition of the if statement and see is the button equal to zero? No. Okay, continue. Is the button equal to zero? No. Okay, continue. And it just does that continuously over and over again. Now, this is slow. It's wasteful of the CPU time. And if you had a hundred different conditions, then, for example, when you're checking through the 50th condition, the first condition might now be true, but the program's missed it because it's in the 50th condition. And it's not going to get back to that first condition until the program restarts again. So when you stack up all these if statements, it becomes an absolute mess and it really, you know, not not great. So when we're dealing with hardware, especially, you know, when you want someone to be able to push a button, using the interrupt is actually is absolutely perfect. So so if you're a serious programmer, you need to learn and get used to using interrupt routines. They're not not difficult, really. Uh, an interrupt, according to its priority, will interrupt nearly everything that's going on in the program in order to execute its own code. So while each interrupts configuration determines, you know, what is actually in interrupted, if the interrupt is active, then the regular program will be stopped. So let's take that same code that we had with the if statement and let's now get rid of the if statement and put in an interrupt. So let me show you how this works on the actual breadboard and then, you know, we'll go through the code step by step. So so as you can see, the LED on the nuclear board is just flashing on and off continuously, non-stop. And then when I push the button on the breadboard, then the LED turns on. And although it happens very quickly, the program where it's flashing the onboard LED actually stops. And then the LED, when I push the button, the LED will turn on. And when I push it again, it will turn off. Okay, so let's quickly go through this code. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go into too much detail here. So you can see at the top here, we've got our hashtag include. So first we declare the embed header. Then we set our button, which is connected to D6, so our interrupt in, connected to D6. And that we're setting as our interrupt in, interrupt input. 
Then we declare two digital outputs. Firstly, the LED on our breadboard, which is connected to D5, and then our onboard LED, which is just labeled in the code as LED1. So after we've done our declarations, then we've got a function here called flip, void flip. We'll be calling this function in our main code. And all this code does, as you can see here, it just says LED is equal to not LED, which means that it just inverts the status of the LED. So, so if the LED value is one, meaning that the LED on the breadboard is on, so, so LED is equal to one, meaning the LED on the breadboard is on, then we're gonna invert it. So we're gonna say, instead of being one, go to zero, means we turn it off. And instead of being zero, go back to one. So that's what this function does. It just turns the LED on the breadboard on and off. And then we have the main function, which is where we first activate the pull up resistor on our button. So as you can see here, button dot mode pull up. We do this because we want to ensure that we don't leave the pin floating. And I have a whole video on this, which is called pull up resistors explained on STM32 nuclear boards. I'll link it below. If you don't understand pull up resistors, check it out. Very important, pretty much essential to your uh, embedded programming. So make sure you check that out. So now for the important part of the code, we want our program to activate the interrupt when the button is pressed. There are many ways we can do this involving whether we want the interrupt to run when the button is pressed or when we release the button. And that there, is, there is a difference. So when you press it, we call that our, the rising edge. And then when it's pressed down, we call it the level edge. And then when we release it, as it's been released, we call it the falling edge. I won't go into too much detail about this now, but you basically have different options depending on whether you want the interrupt to be activated when as soon as the button is pressed or when the button is pressed down or as soon as you lift your finger off the button. So if you think about, for example, <laughs> you know those mines that they have in the fields in, uh, in wars that you step on, when you step on it, it doesn't blow up immediately, right? And that's by design. So it only blows up once you lift your foot off of it. And so you do have mines that, for example, as soon as you touch them, they blow up. So yeah, uh, basically <laughs> our, our push button is not a, <laughs> it's not a mine, but it works with a similar kind of, that's how you can understand rising edge, level edge and falling edge. So in this program, what we're doing is we're activating the code on the rising edge of the button press, which means that we want the interrupt to happen as soon as the button is pressed down. By us writing our button name dot rise, we're setting it to activate on the rising edge then in brackets, we put the function name where the code that we want to run during the interrupt is. So in our case, it's the flip function. Thereafter, we have the meat of the program, which is just a standard while loop so that the program constantly runs. And then here we're inverting our onboard LED from zero to one and back again, basically turning, turning on the onboard LED and then off and on continuously forever. And then we've got thread sleep four, which is a function within the embed header file which tells the microprocessor to sleep for 250 milliseconds, which allows us to see our onboard LED flashing on and off with a 250 millisecond delay. And that's it, that's the end of our code. You can see it's super simple. Now, in order to just make sure that you've understood this, if you had some code, for example, which set off the fire alarm and turned on the sprinklers when the button was pressed, you'd put that code which turned on the fire alarm and activated the sprinklers, you'd put that in the flip function. So what I'll do is I'll rename this flip function to emergency. I'll stick fire alarm is equal to true. Sprinklers is equal to true. And then now what's going to happen is we just put button.rise and an emergency, which is our function call. And then now when the button is pressed down, you're going to activate those systems. And so that's a good way to think about what you can do with these interrupts. And that's it. I think you're pretty much good to go now. So what I would suggest is give it a go, practice, and I think that's the best way to learn, to be honest with you. Give it a go. Practice makes perfect. And yeah, if you haven't watched my other video on pull-up resistors, make sure you check that out. Subscribe if you're into this kind of content. And yeah, I shall see you guys around. Take care.